This is uh, Jim Fetzer with a real deal update on the coronavirus crisis with Dean Ryan in LA and Mike Mara in Seattle. We begin with an update on uh, the economic aspect, which is, of course, the devastating part of all of this. 60% of Americans won't be able to cover basic necessities in a month or less because of the quarantine. This is very serious. Some are in even worse shape. One in five saying they would not be able to afford the rent, groceries, and essential bills like water and electricity after a mere week of quarantine. Small businesses are also suffering. We've been reporting about this. Uh, the stimulus package does have some concessions, such as a $350 million small business loan program, known as a Paycheck Protection Program. But the dimensions are such as we've been emphasizing 90% of American companies have 20 or fewer employees. 75% can't last a month. They're starting to run out. Robert Steele has published a very appropriate letter to President Trump. If you do not announce a return to normalcy today, for normalcy with prudence from tomorrow, Friday, 9 April, Good Friday and Passover, in time to fill the churches on Sunday, you have failed to be right with God and right with America at this most delicate time in our history and presidency. The Constitution cannot and should not be suspended on the basis of lies. The same people who did the Trump dossier and then the Imperial College fake model for a fake pandemic are now manipulating the media to deny 5G reality. The time has come to disgrace and dismiss little Mussolini Fauci to investigate Bill Gates and all those that collaborate with him in this fake pandemic, insider trading, and treasonous scheme to end your presidency, and to expel the UN and leave all UN agencies, starting with WHO. Dr. Ron Powell, Dr. Shiva, Mark Nontra, Wayne Jett, Mike Flynn, Bill Benny and I are all out here to help you reconstruct America. I cannot overstate the loss to us all if you fail to fill the churches this coming Sunday. We can deal with 5G later as part of the reconstruction plan. From now, end the fear based on lies to get America back into churches and back on track. I think he's got it exactly right. Dean, your thoughts out there in California? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Robert. Um, and, and people are getting restless. Uh, I can tell you last night uh, here in LA, people are beginning to break their curfew past uh, 10 and past midnight. And it's gotten to the point where I actually witnessed a, a Chinese communist drone following a car and then or barking orders at them from the drone, talking to them, threatening them. Uh, then sirens are, are, are more of a thing at night now. Uh, people are, are beginning to be un, unrest. A civil unrest is, is spurring throughout the country. Uh, you know, in, in Chicago now, you can't even leave your neighborhood in some cases, and, and we will have a video on that. I'll, I'll post it on the channel, on the Dean Ryan TV uh, channel on YouTube. But this is the beginning of something that's going to be very ugly if things don't change uh, and there's no food in, in the local stores where I am currently. Uh, even if I try to order out, they, they call me back and say uh, the shelves are out of stock. Uh, this is a dystopic uh, reality people are now waking up to. This is not just a two-week break from normalcy. Uh, the darkness is rising, and so is the civil unrest uh, that's being placed upon us by this one-world government uh, headed by the Chinese. So, um, yeah, it's a frightening time, Jim. Dean, just as a point of clarification, you're talking about Chinese communist made drone operated by the LAPD. It's not a Chinese communist drone. It's made in China. You're right. Right, like made in China by a Chinese company, DJI, who the information they're gathering from the drones is going back to China. That's not my that, opinion. That's DHS and ICE, Jim. That's good. That's good. Mike Barra, Seattle. Yeah, trust me, all the information is going right back to the ChaiComs. There's no, no way around that. Uh, again, you know, all those extra rolls of toilet paper, I should have brought my toilet paper prop with me today, but all those extra rolls of toilet paper you bought, take those, unravel them so they're nice and loose. You see a drone, throw it at the drone, take it out of the sky. They're easy to take out. Just start taking them all down. This is not France. This is not Great Britain, which are police states. We are not going to let the deep state control our lives like this. You know, things have got to flip. Um, in terms of the economy, yeah, our economy is really in, in, in being devastated by this. 
fortunately, I believe there is a, a plan, but the question is how, when is that plan going to be executed? It's very clear to me that the pandemic is falling apart. Again, I talked to my checkout lady at Costco yesterday. She was like, people are not going to put up with this much longer. They're getting sick of it. And we're all getting sick of the, you know, six foot distancing and all this nonsense for a non-existent hoax virus, which isn't even as deadly apparently as the flu. The flu's killed a lot more people this year than this supposed, you know, plague that we've got that's supposed to be killing people at a rapid rate. God knows what the death rate estimate's going to, death toll estimate's going to be today. It's probably going to be down under 40,000. I, I think at the pace we're going, we're not going to make 40 or 50,000 people. There aren't enough old people in this country to kill off with the thing. So it's not going to happen. Um, and again, this, this notion that the media, which is completely left wing, even Fox News is, is probably 60, 40 liberals to conservatives at this point. And I'm not just talking about the on air people. But with the media pressure, oh, you have to keep social distancing. That's, you know, they're trying to argue that that's what's keeping people from getting infected, when in fact the disease simply isn't that virulent that never was. But they want us to not be worshiping. They want us to not be touching, you know, getting in touch with God. They do not want the churches filled on Easter. It is a sick, demonic, satanic ritual of theirs it's it's the it's the liberal left demonics liberal left's wet wet dream really to close the churches on easter it should be fought it should definitely they should all be open and people should go to church on sunday well mike i think you got that all right now we have a minnesota senator and doctor reveals that they're coaching physicians across the country to overcount covid 19 cases Last Friday, I received a seven-page document, he explained, that told me if I had an 86-year-old patient who had pneumonia but was never tested for COVID-19, but after came down with pneumonia, we learned she had been exposed to her son, who had no symptoms but later was identified with COVID-19. It would be appropriate to diagnose on the death certificate COVID-19. He points out it's not a normal procedure. It's a way of running up the death toll, faking it. Here we had Dr. Birx uh, admitting that they're classifying persons, regardless of their cause of death, as COVID-19. As she puts it, we've taken a very liberal approach to mortality to scare the wits out of the American people. This is called lie -y. big lies. We have more than 700 employees at one Detroit hospital claiming to have been tested positive for coronavirus. If that isn't proof they're getting false positives, I can't imagine what would be. That's completely absurd. Meanwhile, we may have found the birth of event 201. That, this is dated from 20 May 2009. In a quiet meeting close to the news media and the public, Bill Gates, David Rockefeller, Oprah Winfrey, other leading philanthropists met in New York this month to discuss ways to promote efforts to solve growing social problems. Understand, for them, population is a problem. It, it included Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, Ted Turner, Warren Buffett, George Soros. These are the perps. The problems for them are getting control of the people and killing populism the ability of the public to influence the course of the government and the future of the nation. Dean, your thoughts? Uh, yes, that's exactly right. If uh, anyone has read the uh, UN Agenda 21 and UN Agenda 2030, it's all about 90% uh, depopulation. All those people involved, that's what they want. This is the plan to sterilize us, put the sodium fluoride in the water so men are, 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 are birthing exercises are reduced and, and uh, fertility rates. So uh, th this is the plan. This is the power grab to say uh, all these infections, all these deaths to get more federal money for the hospitals, for, for um, certain political parties and states and blue cities. Uh, this is the, the final grab of this one world government consolidating us un under a, a, a uh, fascist regime. Uh, so we have to push back and we're doing that here in, uh, by exposing the fraud because it's so obvious. It's so obvious that you, you can hardly be timid anymore to just see how fraudulent, how wrong, immoral, all this going around us is that, that if you not even wear a mask anymore, you're going to get snitched on and these people are going to pump you full of vaccines and test you whether you have corona or not. 
or put you in a gulag. And, and we, we see that happening daily. I get messages and videos. This is real, and, and the resistance is right here, right here. I mean, it's unbelievable, but I think he got it right. Mike. The depopulation agenda has obviously been around for a long time. It's born of this environmentalist wacko mindset that was created in the 19, late 1960s by the hippies. It's absolutely nuts. The earth is not dying. Everything is getting along just fine. The oceans are full of fish. Everybody is doing just fine. There's a great video on YouTube. You just type in earth population 11 billion and the video will come up. It's a Danish professor who talks about, he works through the math about the rate at which people die, the rate at which people are born, and the fact that the earth's population will peak at 11 billion and it will never get beyond that unless people start living it all of a sudden to be eight or 900 years old. Then all of a sudden we might have a population problem. But the fact is 11 billion is easily supportable by this planet. There's absolutely no reason why we have to do any of this depopulation stuff or slow down the birth rate. It's all nonsense. It's all satanic, sick stuff that needs to be reversed. And every single person in that meeting, all of these billionaire philanthropists, I'm not going to say what needs to happen because it might get this video banned, but, but you know, it involves rope. They need to be dealt with harshly, Mike. You, you got it 100% correct. There's no doubt about it. Well, not only are they overcounting uh, the numbers, but in fact, the transmissibility death rates and raw numbers really substantiate that this is a minor phenomenon. Look at the death rate there, COVID-19 on the left, a bar graph, compared to influenza, massively greater, compared to suicide, compared to accidents. We have a new report here, very serious, on my blog. The death rate for those who contract COVID-19 is uncertain, probably closer to that of the seasonal flu than the figures being reported. The average years of life lost from COVID-19 deaths are significantly fewer than common causes of untimely death like accidents and suicide. The virus that causes COVID-19 is very vulnerable to antibody neutralization and has limited ability to mutate. If, if 240,000 COVID-19 deaths ultimately occur in the United States, which is a high number. The virus will rob about 2.9 million years of life from all Americans who are alive at the outset of 2020, while accidents will rob them of 409 million years or 140 times more than COVID-19. On the other hand, Elderly and those with chronic ailments are extremely vulnerable. Therefore, the, the, furthermore, it is highly transmissible. It could spread and overwhelm, but it turns out that everything we're being told has been an exaggeration. There's a great deal of information here. I encourage you to go to the, my blog, roughly a total of 11,784 residents have died from COVID-19 as a April 7th, that to put the figure in perspective, roughly 12,469 died from swine flu from April 12th, 2009 to April 10th, 2010. The, an average of 37,000 people in the U.S. have died from influenza each year for the past nine years, 170,000 each year dying from accidents. In other words, this is a relatively minor trivial as we previously explained, even Dr. Fushi in an article in the New England Journal of Medicine admitted that if you look at the probable number that I actually have, then the clinical consequence of COVID-19 may be more akin to those of a severe seasonal flu that, or a pandemic influenza rather than a disease like SARS or MERS. Even Fushi himself is admitting it. 